Hey everyone and welcome to another Gamecast review. Today I'll be reviewing Kingdom Hearts 3, now available for the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. Kingdom Hearts is that one franchise many of us just happened to stumble upon in our younger days. Whether it was on a friend's recommendation, a shared fandom between Square Enix and Disney, or just that it looked interesting enough to try out. It doesn't matter what reason it was, because from that point on you were most likely invested in the journey of Sora, Riku, Kairi, Donald, Goofy, and all the other Disney worlds and franchise crossovers this series is known for. Spanning many different platforms and a couple console generations, the series has finally all been collected on the PlayStation 4, making the third numbered entry a big deal, as you can finally experience the whole convoluted tale all on one console. Sorry Xbox One. If you somehow managed to make sense of it all, or took in enough from the fairly good recap videos contained in the game, then you're good to go. Kingdom Hearts 3 is set shortly after the events of Dream Drop Distance and immediately after the events of 0.2 of Fragmentary Passage. Sora having gone through ordeal after ordeal has once again found himself stripped of many of his abilities. In order to face the imminent final battle, he needs to regain his lost strength and fast. While he does that, Riku and King Mickey are busy gathering the remaining warriors they need to help fight against Master Xehanort and defeat the darkness presumably for good this time. As you progress between the self-contained narratives of each Disney world, a larger picture will start forming together for those able to keep up. It is a bit hard to keep track of what's going on, and this is especially apparent towards the end of the game and during the epilogue and secret movies, which may confuse even the most seasoned of Kingdom Hearts veterans. Basically, know that there are 13 darknesses fated to clash with 7 pure lights, who can be represented by Guardians of Light, i.e. Keyblade wielders. The 13 darknesses are comprised of many familiar faces from the franchise's long runtime, with many of their appearances simply being explained by random acts of the power of darkness or time travel. Just accept it, it's a game where Goofy and Donald can talk to Woody and Buzz from Toy Story. There's a lot more to it of course, but it's just a very, very newcomer unfriendly narrative structure. It also doesn't feel conclusive. It does what it absolutely needs to do, but there is still so much left around as sequel bait. While I don't mind that in TV series and games in general, in Kingdom Hearts' case who knows when we'll see the next game and whether it tackles the issues they've raised isn't guaranteed either. Just try to enjoy the ride as it is even though it may be hard to keep up with. Gameplay is by far Kingdom Hearts 3's strongest point. It's also the most varied, as in almost every world there is something new added either in the form of a unique mechanic or a mini-game that twists the already established formula. The basic gameplay engine is the sort of free-roaming, floaty, platforming meets action RPG style fans of the series are familiar with. Complex maneuvers are easily performed, magic chains through combos effortlessly, and Sora's new abilities tear through practically anything. Playing on standard mode, I never really felt the game gave me a challenge until post-game. I didn't fail a battle until the second last boss in the entire game. In a regular Kingdom Hearts, I would have failed battles earlier, as I came to terms with enemy patterns or my current equipment and skill loadout. Instead, I found the main campaign to be a breeze on standard and was able to move through it with minimal challenge. Sure, my health dropped to critical fairly often, but there are so many options to stay alive in this entry. Both Sora and Donald can heal, your party limit is bigger so you no longer have to swap out characters when visiting new worlds, and your new form change and attraction system basically breaks most fights. The form change system is a sort of evolution of a similar system from Birth by Sleep on PSP. Basically, the more you use a certain action, that action will then evolve and grant you a temporary bonus, changing both your attacks and playstyle. In Kingdom Hearts 3, using magic constantly will yield upgraded spells and the chance to cast Grand Magic which is a devastating high level spell that costs nothing to use. Using different Keyblades and combos will allow your Keyblade to transform. This changes your combos and will grant you new finisher techniques. For example, the Toy Story Keyblade can become a hammer and then a drill-like device. Your Star Seeker Keyblade becomes twin pistols and then a cannon. And your classic Kingdom Key allows you to transform into a state similar to a maxed out Sora from the second game, granting you fast, devastating combos. The game allows you to hold and swap between three active Keyblades at a time. It's a good system and gives you good reason to hang on to your old weapons while trying out new combos. They don't seem that overpowered at first, but as you upgrade your Keyblades and once you acquire some of the endgame forms, Sora will just shred through most enemies and encounters. When on critical health, Sora can enter Rage Mode, which restores his HP and gives him a moveset kind of like the Anti-Form from Kingdom Hearts 2, except this time a lot more useful. It's meant to be a sort of last resort ability, but it comes with very few negatives and can be cancelled with a team up attack or attraction. Which brings us to another of Kingdom Hearts 3's new features, team up attacks and attractions. 
Throughout the game, Sora will have many opportunities to team up with Donald and Goofy to perform special team attacks. These can range from homing flares to a slingshot ground pound to a rain of meteors. They can be pretty powerful and they have no negative side to them. You can even team up with your companions from each Disney world such as Buzz and Woody riding a firework like Rocket and Rapunzel rolling you up in her hair and launching you high into the sky for an aerial bombardment. Attractions are quite similar, although they act a little more like mini-games with Sora, Donald and Goofy activating an actual Disney World attraction to defeat enemies. Each attraction comes with its own unique gameplay style, like shooting down enemies in a first-person shooter, spinning around in bumper car-like teacups, and riding a giant firework shooting train car of destruction. They're powerful, easy to use, and come at no cost. They can make some encounters laughably easy, and if you ignore them it can be annoying flipping through all your time-sensitive commands. Some are scripted and those are fine, but the unscripted ones can just tear through the game. As you cut through what seems like endless heartless nobodies and everything else in between, you'll accumulate a huge amount of items and materials. The synthesis feature returns from previous entries, with a larger focus on upgrading your keyblades, meaning you can hang onto a particularly useful form by upgrading the associated keyblade, so its stats don't lag behind the current world you're exploring. They also encourage you to take plenty of photos and search for hidden lucky emblems to unlock even more materials and craftable accessories. It added a fun little extra layer to exploring the game and the locked secret ending made lucky emblem hunting a must. The other large component to gameplay is the return of the gummy ship. Now I want to make it clear I never really cared much for the gummy ship in previous entries. I can see the appeal of building the ideal ship or emphasizing form over function, by basically making whatever it is you can imagine. However, I felt like it was a bit of counter to the rest of the experience. A fine game by itself, but it doesn't really gel with the rest of Kingdom Hearts. This time around I had similar feelings, but I was very happy that the new open environments and mostly non-linear style of gummy progression let you just fly to a new world while ignoring all the fluff in between. It feels a lot more like Star Fox now, which I'm sure some people will love about it, but I just can't get into it. Visually, Kingdom Hearts is the strongest it has ever been. The new Unreal Engine has done wonders for the franchise and really brings the Disney worlds to life. Even some clever use of CG makes its way into the later worlds in a very natural way. Sora, Donald and Goofy all look like they just jumped out of a Square Enix presentation, and Sora's hair looks appropriately JRPG protagonisty. All the new character designs look great, as a sort of streamlined version of previous games. This transition is most clear in Sora, who starts the game in his outfit from Kingdom Hearts 2. Riku is channeling his inner Noctis, which is funny, but with the amount of teasers and parody content surrounding Final Fantasy vs. XIII in Kingdom Hearts 3, it's hard to tell if it's a clever meta joke or if Tetsuya Nomura is angry he was taken off the project when it shifted gears to FF15. Regardless, this Kingdom Hearts simultaneously has very little Final Fantasy representation and a lot of Final Fantasy influence, which is hard to describe unless you play it for yourself and keep your eyes peeled. The subtle changes to the visual style depending on the current Disney worlds are nice too, however the drastic changes like Monsters Inc and Toy Story are the ones that stand out most. They've expertly captured the look and feel of Toy Story and while Monsters Inc technically looked the part, I didn't feel like the environments I was going through were sufficiently Monsters Inky. The later worlds step it up with even more visual craziness and large expansive areas that make you wish the already large worlds from the first half of the game were even bigger. Mainstay worlds like Twilight Town and Radiant Garden were butchered considerably though. Twilight Town is incredibly small in comparison to its Kingdom Hearts 2 incarnation, and Radiant Garden is only shown during cutscenes, which is a very convenient way to ignore Final Fantasy characters that have taken up residence there. When it's all in motion the game retains its incredible visuals and all of your new forms, team up attacks and attractions are a marvel to behold, at least the first few times. Everything is on a much bigger scale than it was in previous games, and it's constantly trying to up itself in terms of what can be done and what can still be counted as gameplay. I'm a little confused as to why Sora is now acting a bit like a millennial now that he has a phone. Every main load screen is like the Disney equivalent of Instagram and it's more than a little odd. It's also funny that there are photos that Sora couldn't have possibly taken himself, and some weird commentary like I'm strong because of my friends, but he has three photos of himself. It's such a mixed bag and this spills over a little into its soundtrack, which while good relies very heavily on older songs from previous games. The new Disney themes are fun twists on iconic sounds, but there just aren't that many new songs in this entry and many are just returning tracks or remixes. At least the opening and ending themes are original, so we've got that. The voice work is mostly solid, if you can ignore the cringy dialogue. Because it's Kingdom Hearts it does kind of get a free pass, but the actual voices are quite good. 
Anyone who isn't reprising their roles from the films has a pretty good sound alike, but some of them have a bit of trouble with more emotive lines, which is a bit of a shame. The original cast are quite good with a huge list of returning actors and a few new ones. Riku is a bit inconsistent with emotion in his lines and Axel doesn't sound right until around halfway through the main story. Goofy brings his regular goofiness, Sora has more personality now, and Donald may be even more unintelligible than before, which makes me thankful for subtitles. Overall, Kingdom Hearts 3 is a very fun game. It's not all that challenging, which is annoying given previous entries. The story is a mess, and even with the recap movies, this is a very beginner and friendly game, which is probably why so many of the previous games were re-released on PS4. It's so aggressively complex, like it could be told so easily if they wanted to, but they are so set on making it as complicated as humanly possible so only the most die-hard fans will make sense of it all. I'm invested in the characters and the smaller game narratives, but I have difficulty saying the entirety of the story itself is good. It's especially evident here where the Disney storylines seem sort of inconsequential to the big picture, like they're just filling in time for the final showdown. But like I said, it's a lot of fun and it looks incredible. As a game it's enjoyable enough, but don't be surprised to leave with more questions than answers. For fans that have been staying up to date, I'd say the game is a must buy if they somehow haven't already bought it. But for someone who hasn't had an interest in the franchise till now, or is a fan of Final Fantasy or Disney and want to hear a good story, then I'd have trouble recommending them this. Previous games are fine, but the convoluted story and the lack of Final Fantasy definitely hurt my overall impression of the franchise that started out by having a fairly easy to follow story of Light vs Dark under a Disney and Final Fantasy backdrop. I hope you enjoyed that video, please don't forget to like and subscribe and please let us know what you thought of Kingdom Hearts 3 and the Kingdom Hearts franchise in the comments below. Until next time, bye! You're gonna like this.